Right, we're looking at a program here called uh, Audacity. It's a um, multi-track audio recording package. So you've got your turntable or um, your tape deck all sorted out. You've got your preamp in line or a USB turntable, USB preamp in line connected to the uh, computer via the um, line input or microphone input. What we need now is a program to record with this one here. Audacity is a freeware program. Quite popular for um, doing all sorts of audio editing. Uh, but just a couple of things you need to do when you first turn it on. You can see up the top top uh, here I've got uh, the um, monitoring going. So you, as I talk you can see it bouncing up and down your VU meters. Right, what we need to do is to set up a few things. We're going to view or edit down to preferences. Now we'll have a look at this first one here, audio I slash O. When you get some um, Audacity first install it, it'll come up channels, one mono. What we actually want is two stereo, stereo channels. We don't change anything else on that page. And then we go down to interface. And when you first set it up, this auto scroll while playing is not ticked. If we uh, tick that, I'll uh, try and um, explain that in a minute, if I remember, while we do that. And that's really the only two things you've got to change, and just choose OK. That's all done. Now, you've got all the other controls up here, your pause, play, stop, and your um, skip to start, end, and record button. You've got your playback volume here, your microphone line input level here. Uh, you've got a selection of inputs. The ones you'll be using is the line input or microphone input and be aware that if you're using the microphone input uh, most times the microphone's only mono. Line input will do stereo, microphone and if you're planning on using a laptop most laptops only have a microphone input. Some of them have a microphone slash line input that you can choose one or the other in the same port but uh, most of them just have a microphone input which will in most cases be mono. So uh, line input. In my case, I'm using stereo mix because I need to mix the, uh, the the microphone and the turntable and what audio is coming from the computer at the same time. All right, we we'll just hit the record button, and uh, I'll drop the arm on the turntable. that down a little bit there. You can see that the um, the level there, I'll just pause that and go back a bit. The level here that we're, we've been recording is um, around about 60%. Uh, you want to get up to around 80 or 90 so I'll just continue recording and uh, you'll watch I'll just adjust the, uh, adjust the levels. off there so you can see there that um, what we really need to do is aim, aim between about 80% uh, maximum on the on the loudest track so choose the loudest track on the vinyl or the tape and set all your levels off that if it's a bit if it's a bit low it doesn't really matter you can always bring it up later but if it's too loud and uh, you get um, uh, your waveform becomes flat, a straight line at the top here and the bottom, that's distortion. Now you can't fix distortion, so you're better to keep it down rather than uh, than up. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that track there now is recorded. There's a bit of speech up the front here. We can edit that track. We can just um, we can see where the needle hit, hit here. I'll just play through that bit there. If you watch when the uh, cursor gets to the end, it'll jump. Okay, there we go. Just 
knock that down a little bit there. Yeah, when the cursor got to the end, it jumped, and also on the uh, recording, it jumped as well. That's by ticking that um, that box in the setup there. If you don't do that, the cursor will disappear off the screen and just wander off, and you won't see it again. So you won't know what the level's doing or anything like that. Auto scroll while playing—that's the one. Just tick that box, and uh, and that'll fix that up. Okay, next we need to do is um, is to uh, do some editing. I'll bring up another track which has got some uh, noise on it. This one here. Uh, if you have a close look at the start here, you can see the left channel has got a lot more information than the right channel. That's because this is in true stereo. And if you look just here, you can see there's a straight line there, and there should be another one or two. No, I can't see one there. Okay. Just here, if I play through that, that little bit there, you'll hear a click. Oh, if you heard that, let's play it again. Have a listen. Okay, that's, a, that's just a little scratch, a bit of dust or something on the record. I think there's another one back there. We'll have a listen. Go back a bit further. Have a listen to that. nothing there. I see one coming up. There's one there and then that one there. So what we'll do just as a demonstration we'll take this one here and this one here which is a bit larger. Left click hold wipe across. Now if we want to go further or less we can move our cursor along and or mouse along and you see a little finger comes up there. We can then make it larger or smaller on that side and the other side larger or smaller. Now what we do now, we go into Effect, click Removal, <coughs> and uh, I've set this up. Normally it comes in the uh, neutral position in the middle. And uh, I've set this up to uh, suit this particular recording, the damage that's on this record. What I'll do, I'll move that over to the side. Now if you watch carefully where these uh, these uh, clicks, two clicks here are, and the one up there, I'll just watch what happens. Okay, well they've gone. Now let's play through that and have a listen. Okay. If I do an undo, let's play through that. Get a click, and another one. Okay. And redo there and play it again. Now, um, yeah, the, the the click and pop removal is uh, is not as good as the the commercial ones that I've tried, but it does work. It's if you've got badly damaged uh, media, like some of the old 78s and 45s that have been really mishandled badly, it's not really that good. But uh, for a record that's only got minor damages, it's it's quite good. Now you wouldn't be going through the whole album, and you'd go along, and you'd go this bit and this bit and this bit, do a little bit at a time. You'd go, um, you go to edit, select all, selects the whole side, not the whole track actually. In this case, it's only one track, so um, it selected the whole thing, and then we just go to effect, click removal all our settings are correct and just go OK and it'll just go off and do that. I won't do it because it'll um, take a little bit of time. OK, so that's um, setting up and click removal using Audacity.